too bad we can't turn this off. But uh, I decided to do something really novel today. Uh, I gave, I don't know, probably over a thousand talks in my life, uh, which tells you two things. One, I'm old. Two, uh, I've been around the block a couple of times. Uh, so today I decided that after seeing an unbelievable graphic display of horror movies, and actually I didn't want to come on stage anymore because I was scared, uh, then we saw, you know, the unbelievable problems that natural disasters can do. Then we had global warming, which I have to admit was quite depressing for me. But then we had the gorgeous pictures of the photographer. I decided to go radical. No slides. Uh, so I'm going to spend the 18 minutes to lull you to sleep. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask you a question because my topic today is medical education. Uh, I might leave the stage in a minute. How many people plan to go into life sciences when they grow up? Show of hands, just a show of hands. Who want to be life sciences? Okay, thank God I can stay. Uh, I can talk about it. Uh, how shall we start? Let me tell you that those of you who choose to go into life sciences are in the most exciting time of your life. You couldn't have chosen a better time. And I'm going to try in the remaining minutes to explain that a little bit. But I'm going to tell the rest of you who is thinking of going into science automation, artificial intelligence, you name it, you may end up in medicine. Why do I say that? Uh, medicine has undergone a transformation that is probably, for a better word, can be called revolutionary. In the past, we always dealt essentially with a patient. Medicine started out way before there was law, way before there was society, way before there was religion. There was medicine. There was healing. Healing is the act of trying to transform a sick person back to normalcy. Now, initially, there were shamans, there were herbs, there were potions, you name it. It took millennia until we had the real first medications and until we actually put a scientific thinking behind it. And this is where I actually really came into medicine because my favorite question since I was four years old was, why? And that's probably the question you should be asking if you go into life sciences. Because the why is the most magical question you can ask in this context. I'm going to make a quick pitch because as you heard, my name is Thomas, and I was named after the apostle, and my mom always said, your name is perfectly fitting because you're doubting everything. Uh, no, I didn't. I, I, I'm insisting that I was positive. I'm just curious. And curiosity is something that I hope that will guide you throughout your life. It is especially befitting if you go into life sciences. It is. Why did I say it's absolutely the most exciting time? Because for the first time, medicine is reaching out way over its global limits that we had before. Medicine is reaching out into technology. 
into computer sciences, into artificial intelligence, into synthetic material making, into 3D printing. I mean, I only have 18 total minutes, but I could talk until tonight at 6 o'clock what happened in the last five years that will potentially blow your mind. Little things like we're going to get 3D printers to print valves for human hearts. We don't have to slaughter pigs anymore. But we're going to print them. That's, that is actually already done. We are actually learning, which to me is the most beautiful thing at all. In the past, when I started medicine, we were treating people according to ranges. So a certain amount of medication would fit people of that size. What does that tell you? that tells you that you are actually not addressing an individual. You are addressing a cohort. So you identified a bunch of people where that type of medication will do some good. Ideally, you want individual medicine. You don't want to know what's good for maybe nine out of ten people, you want to know good what's good for Tom Berenbeck, what's good for Claire, what's good for Anton, what's good for whoever. Why couldn't we do that? What was the problem? We were not able to ask the questions we can ask today. Why would you ask? You can always ask a question, right? You can always ask a question. The problem is we didn't have the tools. One of my previous speakers, your teacher, said something that immediately perked up my ears. He said something about climate change is very complex. Right? You heard it. And that's why it's difficult to deal with. I'm sorry, sir. Welcome to my world. My complexity is a hundred times bigger. Because the human organism is such an unbelievable, fine-tuned, complex, machine that it is blows your mind how many processes are happening when you just take one step on stage. You know, we're going piece of cake. I'm going to take one step. Do you know that in this step there have been 10,000 mechanisms that took place that I could take that step? The problem was we couldn't ask what are all those steps? And because we couldn't ask, we couldn't actually understand and we couldn't actually help people who had problems taking a step. So what changed? Anybody have any idea? What changed were that other disciplines, independent from medicine, started things that initial, initially physicians couldn't understand how important they were for medicine. I'm going to give you a couple of things, big data terabyte processing, things that if you talk to a physician, he's going, huh? Something to do with WhatsApp? No. It is that for the first time, we are capable of actually following the data. In the past, 
we were able to take snapshots. So a patient came to me and said, Doc, I'm not feeling very well, and I would measure things. And over the course of my career, I could measure more and more things. It was amazing. I mean, it was gratifying to see that we added one tool after the other, and we got a more complex picture. The problem was, it was still a snapshot. It was a still frame. Life isn't a still frame. Life is a dynamic process that happens not in an hour, not in a minute. It happens in milliseconds. In milliseconds, our organism can change many more things than we can actually comprehend. So we actually needed tools that did the following. Measure all these things, collate all these things, in other words, sort them out, and then last but not least, make sense of them and make sense in a way that we can comprehend. And that's the exciting part, and now I'm going to switch over to education. Because, first of all, if you decide into life science to go into that, here's my biggest piece of advice. Make sure it's what your heart wants. Because you're going to live with this decision longer than you're going to be married. Longer than you have a girlfriend. Because it's going to be with you for life. And you've got to be happy. So whatever you guys decide to be, make it a decision of the heart. If it's life sciences, the question is, what should you study? And I'm going to tell you today something that I wouldn't have said five, let alone ten years ago. Pick something that interests you towards understanding human biology. Because you'll be surprised, even if you study computer sciences, there is a very very good chance that you will very soon encounter a problem that is critical to medicine. Just to give you an idea, so I am, my career spent about 30 years at Mayo Clinic and I was a researcher through this entire time as well as a clinician and so my time was that you have to write grants because, you know, somebody's got to pay for your research because you're not independently wealthy, so you write a grant and hopefully somebody says that's interesting enough and I'm going to give you the money to study that. So I don't know how many grants I've written. Hundreds? Don't know. One theme that I recognized when I look back at the grants that I have written, in the last grant that we submitted, there was only one cardiologist, and out of 11 people, there were only two physicians. The rest, there was an immunologist, so somebody who was a hardcore scientist. We had two bioengineers. We had a computer scientist. We had a, a AI person in there. And, you know, then we had um, somebody from infectious disease. And uh, then we had somebody who was doing stem cell research. So not, nothing related with direct patient care. So it turns out that the questions we are asking in medicine are going more and more into neighboring fields. So that's why I think it's so exciting to go into the life sciences because there is this one goal that has eluded us all the time, which is putting you as the patient, if you have become a patient, in the center 
as an individual. So in other words, the therapy that we are going to create is not the therapy that kind of fits 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people. No, it's your individual therapy. It's your individual medication. It's your individual dose. And it has takes into account your individual organism. When you think that through, the amount of data you need to actually make that happen, that's staggering. It's also wonderful because it poses completely new challenges that go way beyond the sitting down and learning, okay, that bone's connected to that bone, and then the muscle is here, and then the tendon is there, and then I can do this. Forget that. So what's my other message for you? One, medicine is getting unbelievably exciting because it is expanding into fields that are far surround medicine, which makes it really, to me, a cool field. Two, we are moving at an incredible speed. Three, when my great-grandfather's generation was a physician, they handed down the books to the next generation because they were perfectly all right. What was in those books was still valid. I can tell you that part you can forget. So one of the wonderful things that's going to happen to you when you choose life sciences, you're going to have the opportunity to learn for the rest of your life. That may at this point not sound so attractive because, you know, right now it's, God, that means homework and I got to put this in. Forget that. The ability to learn for the rest of your life and never, ever have your curiosity being stifled because there is no more question to ask. To me, is mind-blowing. That's the best thing that can happen to you. So i leave you with this. You can see I love being in life sciences. I would have never picked something else. I hope that all of you will find what makes you happy and where you can grow until you are really, really old. Thanks for having me.